everybody. It's Bonnie in the basement at Quiltville. It's our first quilt cam opportunity for 2018. And I'm really excited to be able to um, work this in. Today, I leave for San Diego tomorrow. The gal I was talking to, Shelly, we were texting back and forth today. She's my contact for the guild in, in Temecula. She's got all of my boxes of books and everything. And uh, she said, <laughs> that she puts i told her it was seven degrees this morning here in north carolina hi everybody and uh at seven degrees she she said she puts on her her long johns at at seven anything below 75 degrees so that's sounding really really good to me right now um i see everybody's coming in i'm so glad to see you now quilt cam is something that we we fit in when we can fit it in and when we can't we just understand that life is busy and i have to work it in between everything else um today i am treadling i got this um i was talking to john from big rig quilting um just a week or so ago and he was asking me about different treadles and what would a, a good one be he's got a family treadle that can come to him and i said well is it a round bobbin or is it a long uh, bullet shuttle and he said he wasn't quite sure and it made me curious um so that i could tell him more information about what i've got so i pulled this one out and i've been doing just some easy string piecing on it i've done a bunch of red blocks now i'm doing a bunch of neutral blocks i've got something up my sleeve just wait just wait and see um I, you know, i'm actually moving my uh pardon me moving my cursor around so it doesn't finish this quilt cam because the arrow was was hovering right over the button um i've trimmed up just a couple see how fun these are this is what string piecing by color family does. Can you see all those different fabrics in there? They're not all just cream on cream, white on white, or beige, or tone on tone. There's some of everything in there. There's some Christmas fabric, a stripe, some baby quilt um, leftovers in there. There's a, some recycled shirt up there in the corner. You know, all those lovely little 1990s things with the cute patchworky hearts and whatever that you hate. Cut them about an inch wide. It just goes in with everything. There's some stuff in here that's really quite nasty. Well, here's a Alabama roll tide. That's that's not nasty. <laughs> so we have some fun stuff. In fact, today I've decided to work in um, when I went to China in October. We were gifted from my my friend's mother's stash. These little these little Chinese guys. Do you see that? This is like a 1950s. Uh, print probably not real pol politically correct at at this day and age but we've got these little chinese guys with pigtails i just think they are so stinking cute so i'm going to work those in and she also sent along and this is all cotton dress fabrics it feels really good but this is a vintage piece and i'm going to work it right on in just as a, a memory of that trip i was saving it aside thinking what can i do with this i thought I just want to sew with it now. I don't want to wait with it. So I am um, sewing these things in. Other things that are going in, some modern stuff. So who says Chinese little guys can't go with some little modern scissors and some Iowa fabric and some batiks? One of the things I do um, with, with my scrap stash is decide if I want to keep something as a strip or if I want something... Uh, to keep it as a string. If I'm not really in love with it, I'm not sure what it will do. I feel perfectly fine cutting any leftover into inch and a half strips that can be used both in the string bucket. Yes, this is my over overloaded uh, neutral string bucket. Or I can use the inch and a half strips as in the blocks that I was working at the cabin this past week. So um, that's what I'm doing today. These are all different widths, different lengths odds and ends of stuff we're just sewing it up um on this machine it's a singer 127 1918 treadle i picked it up for the cabinet i needed i needed the cabinet the cabinet was 75 dollars. and wouldn't you know when you open up the lid there's a machine inside too well now we've got the cabinet and and the machine and this is a, a real sweet one uh, to work with it does have that little shuttle bobbin if i run out of a of um, thread, I'll, I'll show it to you. If this is your first time on Quilt Cam, you're welcome to share your photos and stories with me. And for me to be able to share them with everybody else, because I can't comment back to what you're commenting in the, the comment section 
right now because the laptop's so far away from me, you can email me your photo with a story to my email address, which is quiltville at gmail.com. I won't be able to post all of the photos and share all the photos and the stories while we're here for about an hour, but I will do the best that I can. If you've got some on Ringo Lake shares, do you see what's behind me over here? Here's mine. In fact, I can bring it a little closer. I've had requests. People want to know what's on the back. Well, let me tell you about me. If I'm in a hurry, then there's no chance of spending an extra few weeks or even a few days doing a scrappy back. And I find a fabric that I like on sale, I'm trying to find a corner here, I will do it. So here's, here's my very blank label. <laughs> it's, not, it's not written on yet. But this is the fabric that I found on sale and I used it for the back. I fell in love with this print because um, I had some layer cake squares that came through Quilty Box that was this fabric line, and I actually used those squares in the front of the quilt. So when I saw the same fabric on sale online, I thought, yeah, that's the one I want. And then all of the leftovers became the hanging sleeve. I've already got my hanging sleeve on. If there's any chance of me teaching any quilt as a workshop or if it will be hung anywhere, any chance of that, it gets a hanging sleeve immediately. That way you never have to go back and add something. So that's on there. I can stand up and show you. Move my stool out of the way here. The whole thing. And it's, it's really exciting for me to see what you guys are doing with your colors and your different arrangements of blocks and borders that you've decided to add and how you've decided to set things. Some folks have decided to, instead of using the chevrons as, as sashing, have moved them to the outside border. And that looks really interesting too. So share all the stuff that you're doing. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm very excited to see your finishes and your blocks and what you're putting together. I love the brainstorming on what we can do to change things up and make it your own. So do, do, do share that with me. All right. So on this treadle thing, I have loved my time home. I'm hitting the road tomorrow, so quilt cam today is a way for me to just squeak out an extra hour of machine time. And when I work on string blocks, there's one foot going. Now there's two feet going. You can really get the treadle machine going um, lickety split. But I tend to work on two blocks at a time so that one block is the leader ender for the other. And many of you have done this with me before. And I do piece on paper because paper doesn't have any stretch in any direction. And paper is not going to add bulk to the quilt as fabric wood or dryer sheets or interfacing or coffee filters or whatever you're sewing on. I like to have mine, um, my paper removed when I'm done. So we are sewing through the paper with a very small stitch and that makes the paper easy to remove. And I usually wait until I have a good set of blocks. Tonight I'll have a good set of blocks to trim up and remove paper from. And when it's time to remove the paper after trimming, the paper comes off just so super easy that I can just watch whatever I'm watching. I've been watching from Whence Calls the Heart or When Calls the Heart. That's kind of my uh, guilty girl pleasure because none of the boys in the house will watch it. But the paper comes off so easy and then it's just like sewing regular patchwork units into a quilt. You're not going to have a lot of bulk. Um, in, this, in the seams because there's only one layer of fabric, not two. String quilts are already very piece heavy and there's a lot of seams in the seams. So I, I like to remove the paper. Now I'll be combining these with some other units and you may get to see those as this quilt grows, but this is something I've wanted to do for me for a long time. And I've, I finally decided to just jump in. 2018 is the year that this quilt becomes an entity. So, all right. There's one. Let's do this. See, here's the little little Chinese guys with a little strip. And I usually keep just a small 
handful of scraps at my table and I'll pull from it until I run out of variety and I need something new and then I'll grab another handful and put it on the table and then I'll work from that. So I'm, I'm not spending a lot of time digging down to the bottom of this bucket just to find the one right thing. I'm just looking for pieces that are big enough to go where they need to go. And this one's perfect. It extends beyond the paper about a quarter inch in every direction. So I'm a, a quarter inch beyond the paper on both sides. And then we're going to sew. Now some blocks, some blocks you work corner to corner, such as these. So here's this one. And I start in the center of the block and then work my way out. Even if it's a square block where the strings are going um, straight, I start in the center and work my way out. I thought I had some other blocks in here. They probably, I probably buried them. Now I've got thread stuck on my ring. Okay. So far, so good. We're just going to add another piece on here. Nope, that one's too short. Grab something else. Something big enough. Treadling with strings is a great way to get to learn the machine because your piecing doesn't have to be perfect. You're not aiming for that perfect quarter inch. You don't have to worry about things wobbling just a little bit because that adds to the charm. Sometimes I can get the, the wheel going with just my feet motion underneath. Sometimes I have to give it a, a hand turn to get it going. Just like this. Ta -da! Isn't this just so much fun? So you can start a string collection. And my string collection started with a bucket. <laughs> we get kitty litter in those big white square buckets with, with the handle and, and a lid. Clean out that bucket. It's the perfect thing to start collecting strings. And you just put the bucket down at the end of your cutting table. And anything that you don't want to cut into specific measurements, you'll have some fabric left over from cutting units. So you'll have something that's less than half a fat quarter and you'd like to see the whole thing gone. Whatever it is, you can put in that bucket. And when that bucket is full, you can decide if you want to separate into color families, in which case you're going to need some tubs, and you can put the blues with the blues and the reds with the reds and the yellows with the yellows. Or you may decide you want to just do a scrappy everything rainbow quilt. And I've got some of those going on as well. There's always a string quilt percolating in my head. Okay, we're going to go to the email. And see who's joining us. You see this cord? This is because when I was going to start up Quilt Cam, I noticed that my phone was at 3%. <laughs> so we are a little bit on a tether here. Going to my email. That's quiltville at gmail.com. Here's Peggy who says, hi, Bonnie. Hi, Peggy. How are you? She says, on Ringo Lake is pretty. I was overwhelmed knowing I hadn't finished Orca Bay, so this year I decided to just work on Orca Bay. I have all the parts now ready for assembly. So that's a great way to enjoy mystery season without feeling like you're starting a new UFO. Work on your UFO from last year, your last year's mystery or five years previous mystery while we're running this one, and you'll still feel like you're in for the party. So that's great. She says, thanks for all the mysteries. I do hope to start on Ringo Lake one of these days. And today I'm working on my fig tree mystery, she says. So glad to have you joining in, Peggy. Lisa says, string quilt corners. Those half square triangles work great for the corners of the string quilt. Yes, they do. In fact, I've got, these were some leftover ones from, I think, this year's mystery. This Does this look familiar to anybody? Neutral triangle? They work really great in the, in the corners. So I've got a, a small stack of leftover neutral triangles that I'm working from here. So that's from Lisa. This one's from Diane, and she says, still working on clue number two today using my favorite 301. And she sent a picture, so I'll share that with you. Let's see if I can turn this here. Looks like, oh, she's got a pink one and a tan one and a finger in the photo. <laughs> that's been my kind of day. I turned over, I'm, I'm basting a quilt on the long arm for hand quilting, and I turned over the border just to pull any wayward thread so that no dark threads shadowed through the light area. And there was a leader ender, sewn 
to the border of the quilt on the back side. So a little bit of time with the seam ripper. I'm so glad you're joining us. I love those 301s. I also see a fabulous IKEA light there. I've got my IKEA light pointed right here so that I can um, see what the foot's doing. This one gives general great light over my entire surface, but I still need a light right at the at the foot. Okay. Belinda says, my very first completed quilt. That's always exciting. She says, last week I was blessed to gift my very first completed quilt to my newborn grandson, Benjamin. This week I am starting my second quilt using Boxy Stars for your another grand boy due in March. So, oh, this is cute. Oh, this is cute. And it's string blocks. Oh, wonderful. I'm going to biggie size this one because this little guy's super cute. We want to be able to see him. He is like dwarfed little baby new grandbaby hooray on beautiful beautiful quilt that is just wonderful thank you for sharing benjamin with us those colors that the orange and turquoise what a combo what a combo love that okay carolyn says oh cute 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 carolyn so it looks like she's done a baby quilt as well and she's working on some applique fishies there in a little ocean scene. Isn't that just adorable? That's wonderful. I love to see what you're working on. And the quilting looks perfect, too. It looks like a, a real watery texture. I love the bubbles. Love the bubbles. So I am packing my suitcases um, to head to San Diego tomorrow. And I kitted up this week two quilts. The other parts that, that are going for this one are all cut out, kitted up, in sandwich baggies so that I can just pull a set and and work with it. I've got a um, machine waiting for me when I arrive and I should have, I'll get a nap when I first get there um, tomorrow, but then I'll have some evening time sewing. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and the, the purple and black stars that I started a couple of weeks ago, the extra fabric came. I have um, an additional two yards to work with. So I cut out all of the half square triangles that need to go in that project and those are in baggies and I'm, I'm ready to start um, building more of those stars too. So that's two more projects for, for my on the go that will get done this year. Michelle says, Thai quilt I just quilted this morning. Doing the happy dance to see the end in sight. I'm binding today. Oh, Michelle, this is wonderful. So she's got all of those men's ties in this quilt. She spent a lot of time putting that together. That's wonderful. So she's ready to bind on that one. That's really pretty. You know, when you have all of those those ties and you want to do a memory quilt, that's a that's a great thing to do. Ellen says treadle in her subject line. She says, I'm treadling today for the first time ever. Treadle girls unite. She says, 1911 red eye. I've got a bit of a play down below though and it sounds kind of clunky um it's actually some of those machines just sounded clunky because of the what they call the pitman rod it's the rod that goes um from i can reach mine back here there's a there's a ball joint at the bottom of that pitman rod and it fits right in this little coupling with a with a little um with a little nut so it's inside there but that actually moves around. So it, it does kind of clank, 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 clank when you treadle. This one doesn't do so bad. And some of the older ones have a wooden pitman rod and they just work on, um, it. The, the rod just has a little pulley system. So it doesn't clank, clank, clank the way that those metal poles do. But you might find that you can get down there and tighten up that nut and that might um, make a little bit less noise. I've got a real clanky cabinet at the cabin too. So it's not one of those that I can treadle while folks are watching TV because it's clank, 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 clank. She says, I'm hoping I can get it sounding nice so I only hear the beautiful sound of the stitching. No, eh, clanking happens. <laughs> clanking does. Uh, Kathleen says, working on my mystery quilt with my pal Smush. Oh, cute puppy. Come on, photo. Oh, look at that. There's a little smushy face. That is sweet. So her on Ringo Lake is coming together. I'm loving how it's looking. That bottom, that bottom row of that block needs to be turned around, girlfriend. It's almost right. That's how variations are born. Love it. Okay, so one more from Emily who says it's her first quilt cam. So we're gonna grab this. Then I'm gonna treadle some more. 
She says, I saw this on project on Pinterest and had to give it a try. Sewing nerds unite. I love it. So here's her picture. How cool. So it's it's a it looks like a moon. At least I'm guessing it's a scrappy moon. So that's her project from Pinterest. Wonderful. Love it. Love it. So Alice says, trying to find your live quilt cam. Okay. I'm going to send this to her voice to text because she can't find us. And if I just spoke to the camera, she wouldn't find it. Go to my Quiltville Facebook page and refresh the page. You should see the feed right underneath the pinned on Ringo Lake post at the top, period. Hopefully that'll get to her. Okay. It's, it's kind of hard to tell her while we're live here where to go if she can't find the live feed in the first place. Iowa fabric. So I tend to pre-cut. I'll give myself about a, a quarter inch either side and trim off the end. And if the end is big enough to save for a corner, I will. But that one's not going to be. I'll pitch that. I'm going to sew this on here. Now this one, I don't worry about straightening up all of the ends of the fabric. You see how this little Chinese guy is kind of curved out here? What I do is take a piece that has a straight edge and just lay that over the top and I will follow the edge of the straight edge piece and then trim off the excess um, after the seam is sewn. So you don't have to trim absolutely everything straight before sewing. You can eyeball some stuff. This one's almost done. So these these blocks have anywhere between five and, and seven or eight pieces in them. And I keep a little short stack of leftover stuff over here on the side for corners. It was because of treadling that I got used to sewing my lamp bulb is in the way. I got used to sewing with uh, shoes on. And now I can't sew even on an electric machine without shoes on. And I know some folks are the opposite. They have to have no shoes on. They have to sew barefoot. And for me to sew barefoot feels like I'm driving a car barefoot. And I just don't like the feeling. I need I need something. At least flip-flops or a pair of Birkenstocks or, or um, something with a little bit of support underneath my foot. So there's for Louisa, Iowa, wherever she may be. It says Louisa on there. Now when you get kind of close to the corner here, this is going to be too tiny of a triangle just to put a tiny piece. So I will scoot the next piece further down, making this stripe piece narrower, and then trim out the extra seam allowance. I don't want a seam any closer to this point than about an inch. So if I can put my knuckle from at the corner of the block, that'll show me where I need the next um, seam to fall or a little bit more, but not a little bit less. Because if you get all those seams in the corners, they get really bulky. Okay, so that one, here's one. So I will scoot this down about to there. Can you see that? So there's a little bit of stripe hanging up there, but I'll be able to sew this this white and purple piece, and it's it it will cover that corner, but it it will um, have enough of it showing. Okay. This thing is driving me nuts. I need it up a little bit more. Okay. And here's that one, another one for the done pile. So tomorrow, let's talk about tomorrow. Um, we have not done a um, Mystery Monday link up for a couple of weeks because New Year's Day fell on, um, on Monday. We had our reveal 
on New Year's Day. So now it'll be a whole week since we had New Year's Day in the reveal. So I'm looking forward to what you have to share. Uh, even if you don't share anything, you'll want to watch the link up and, and we're gonna leave it open for a full week this time. It's gonna stay open Monday to Monday. Okay, so or Monday to Sunday night, midnight, so that folks can add their projects, share their blocks, what, whatever it is. So that's a post you'll want to keep checking back on to see what you missed. And it's easy to uh, find what you've missed because the first ones, I've got it in reverse order. So as new people come, the new ones are at the top of the feed instead of all the way down at the bottom. So everybody gets their chance to be in first position on the on the page and then a new one comes and a new one comes a new one comes so the first person um, gets further on down the page so it's easy for you to find out where you last saw the additions um, different colors of the quilts boy has there been some really fun scrappy versions in a rainbow of colors um, what people have done to make two smaller quilts instead of one big one um, maybe they didn't want to set the blocks on point and they've chosen an alternate layout. All of that is fun. So if, if you have anything to share that's on Ringo Lake related, we welcome you to do that. And that will be tomorrow. So I've got to write that post tonight. And then I also have to write um, Tuesday's post because I, I'll be um, way out of whack in, in California and starting my first um, teaching gig of the year. And I'll be three hours time zone ahead of myself by the time I, or behind myself by the time I get there. So, all right, two more strips on here. I'm just watch the hand wheel from the corner of my eye to make sure that that wheel is going towards me. If I see that it's going away from me, I have about a quarter of a turn to fix it before it snaps the bobbin thread. Ask me how long it took to figure that out. Oh, and guess what? We are out of bobbin thread. Hooray, I think. We've got top thread, and there was enough to make it across there. So I just trim out excess seam allowance as I go because blocks are already heavy. Okay, so I have... A spindle bobbin that's already full and they just look like this little tiny little spool thing okay and it's important when you do this that the thread just like when you put a bobbin in a round one that you have to have the thread feeding off a certain way this thread has to come over the top I'm going to remove my uh, seam guide here I actually treadled the borders on the the quilt that's going to be my next hand quilting at the cabin project oh there's still some more thread on there what's the problem let's see if we can make this go further so the thread it's almost down there there's still some thread on this one but i have to have the the thread coming in front of the spool not behind it and i'm going to drop it right into this little thing and then the thread comes down the groove and you'll feel it click. You'll feel it click down at the bottom. And then I have to see while I do this. You come up behind the clip and back to the top. I think when it, the bobbin gets down to the end, the thread's not so happy. It's pretty tightly wound on there. You can fit as much thread on one of these spindles as you can on, say, a featherweight round bobbin. So not as much as like a big Bernina bobbin or anything, but um, you can get quite a bit of thread on there. And we want to use that thread till it's gone. Some of these vintage spools, when, when I pick up a machine and it has, you know, accessories and spools and things with it and, and bobbins, maybe eight different layers of different colors of thread on, on top of each other and trying to get that off of there is just a nightmare. So we like to sew the bobbins empty. Okay. Do this and then go back to the email. I do love the sound that, that they make. There's just no electrical sound, it's just your feet. 
just you know, if you, I tend to put one foot in front of the other, so it's more like a teeter totter. Sometimes it's just one foot, and one foot can get it going just fine. Very rarely am I, um, in, and instead of it, both feet at the same position. And most people would think that it's a push this way, but it's actually lift, lift, lift. So your your ankle flexion is um, it's hard to describe, but it's it is. It's more. So it, you push your heels down this way instead of toes, toes, toes. Does that make sense? If those who treadle um, know know what I mean, but it's it's more of a heel, heel, heel. All right. So we are going back to the Gmail. Hopefully Alice was able to find us. Lucy says box kite. Oh, she sent a photo. Oh, Lucy, this is gorgeous. I love it. Open up photo. Your turn. There we go. So she's got her box kite quilt on her couch in her living room. Great grandfather clock there. Super. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger so that people can see your beautiful blue fabrics. So that's box kite from the Addicted to Scraps book. So much fun. All two and a half inch strips in that quilt. That is just beautiful. And she did the border, which I love. That is gorgeous, Lucy. Thank you for sharing that today. Jill Peck says she loves quilt cam. Hi, Jill. How are you? She says, I sew with middle school kids every day in our maker space in Strongsville Middle School Library. Oh, what fun. Just putting the binding on a strip quilt the kids have made. I brought it home over Christmas to quilt. This is our third quilt in the last year. We have a treadle the kids use to make holes in paper. No thread. So they just get to perforate the paper. That's a great way to get the action going. And she said, um, and other vintage machines, including a donated Singer 401. I have 10 sewing machines all together, most of them donated. The boys and girls love to sew. At least one student got a sewing machine for Christmas. That is so awesome. And she also sent a, it looks like a picture, but I think I have to click it to open it. It says opening document. So let's see what it does. Oh my goodness, it's a strippy quilt absolutely love it what a great way to get kids sewing and see strippy quilts like this it doesn't really matter what their seam allowance is it's just that's just wonderful thanks for sharing that Jill I love it and so for L Lorraine says love that machine I remember you trying out my hand crank 127 at a Colonial Peacemakers Guild workshop love to watch that machine wind bobbins um, I wound a bobbin showed how it was working um, on my Instagram was it last week I think so but I was working on the red string blocks at the time so you can scroll back a week or so in, in my feed and find that very short little one minute video good to hear from you Lorraine Sue says string piecing also working on my string blocks today making a quilt let's see for the hospice center they asked for quilts for their unit love making string blocks I'm using phone book pages for the foundation. Love sewing with you in that Sue in Lancaster County. She's got her, her blocks here on the floor. So you can see her string blocks in progress. Looks like hers have a lot of red, white, and blue in them. There's some other colors too, but that's it's it's just a wonderful um, way to just brainless, brainless. We like brainless. And you can't duplicate a string quilt. So they're always kind of, you know. Different. Here's a Christmassy piece. I think it's time to use that up. And if the fabric tends to have too much color on one side, I'll look at the other side and, and maybe I'll use the back side up. But this one, that's really hideous, but we're going to use it anyway. It's going in a, in a quilt that has red in it, and that's all you're going to see. You're not going to say, oh, gold sparkle. I just love the sound of the treadle. Okay, so we've got two pieces on this one, and I think, will that fit? Yeah, that should cover that corner. So one of the reasons, and it may be a repeat for anybody, I tend to piece larger than the paper foundation, about a quarter inch all the way around bigger than the foundation, so that if I miss a spot 
or I want to focus on something, I have room to shift the ruler around before squaring. So the paper is there just to give you a size to shoot for, but you don't have to stick to the margins of the paper. And we'll grab one of these little great little corners. I've joked about putting my Fitbit on my ankle before when I treadle, but it's true. You do get a little bit of exercise from doing this. It's better than just sitting still. Okay, point, point, point in point here. <laughs> you see this little itty bitty tiny little corner of paper? I'm not going to worry about covering that with fabric. What I'm going to concentrate on is piecing larger on this corner and then I can scoot the ruler down and miss this little corner of paper because I don't, I don't want to seam that close. And it's just fine as it is. So if I just piece a little bit bigger down here, then I'll slide the ruler down and miss that missing corner. So that's, that's the plan. It's just so forgiving. Let's see, what do we have in here that we can grab? That's too tiny. Nothing should be too ugly. But I try to look for stuff that's uh, different width. Some of this is pretty ugly. What about this one? It's kind of a, okay. Looks like this was an inner border or something. And it probably had a whoops cut on it. So that's how it ended up in here. It's kind of a gray beige, but I'm going to use it. Still waiting for that bobbin to all the way run out. String quilts are like stone soup. The more you throw in, the better it tastes. Trimming seam allowance. Okay, I'll show you this one. Okay. Ta-da! So this was that Christmas fabric that I said, oh, that's really, really ugly. Do you see how you really can't even tell what it is anymore yeah it's still fairly ugly but by the time I square up the block even less will show and once it's sewn to something else you really won't notice it and that string is no longer in my string bucket so that's a win they're just so much fun to do so now that on Ringo Lake has had its reveal we know what it is People are working on it. This is where I want to ask you how your leader and ender project is coming. Did you make a lot of progress on it while working on your on Ringo Lake? Uh, mine, I'm more than halfway done. So I'm right on track with a, with a July finish. And I tend to take all year and maybe a little bit more to make the quilt the way that I want to make it, the size that I want to make it. So that's never a race. And any project, if you're not working with a leader ender project right now, anything that you've got, any UFO, just pull it forward and work on using that in between the seams for other things. Now, when I'm string piecing, I tend to not work with a separate leader ender project because I've got my stitch length set really small to perforate the paper. And so I tend to do just the two block method. But while I've been working up at the cabin on the double Irish chain variation blocks that I showed just this last week, I have sewn a ton of four patches in between the lines of chain piecing because those blocks are made one at a time because each block has um, only three colorways of fabric in it. So um, a, a ton of those little black white four patches have been made and I'll be turning those into blocks over the next few months. But anything, just pull something forward, work on it. Okay, some of this stuff, <laughs> yeah, this must have been from squaring up a backing or something because it's just really thready. Okay, one little piece. So yeah, solid white goes in here. Doesn't matter if it has a print or not. Sometimes a, a little bit of a solid can be a nice breaking point for your eye too.
Okay. I just love this blue and white vintage piece that we all got from Lonnie on our trip. So much fun. It was her mama's stash. So, and some of them you could tell that things had been cut out to make clothes. There's like, here's a place where maybe an armhole was cut out or the bodice piece was cut out and had an armhole. It was just great. Okay, we are going back to the email. Suzanne says, oh, yay. So glad to be able to catch quilt cam today. I am working on a baby quilt using hourglass blocks. I'm currently webbing it. Made the hourglass blocks using your ruler. Need to find the directions, but they came out great. <laughs> I even spun the centers. So she sent a picture. Oh, great job. And she's got dump truck fabric. I am, I am guessing it's a baby boy. That is so cute. Here we show everybody here. So she's used a focal fabric, which is that construction fabric. And then she set them with the alternating hourglass blocks in between the, the I Spy novelty print there. And she even sent a picture of how she spun her four patch or her four patch, her hourglass seams on the back. So see how those seams are all rotating around that way? If you are setting hourglass block to hourglass block like we did with last year's Leader and Ender Challenge, that way all of the hourglass blocks will nest with each other all the way across and row to row. So that makes it really nice to take the time to do that. Beautiful job. Super cute. There's a whole lot of baby quilt stuff going on over here. Pam from California says, working on my brown flying geese clue today for On Ringo Lake. See you in Napa in April for your two workshops. Loving the mystery as always. I'm looking forward to seeing you too, Pam. That's extra fun. Karen says, binding this today. Oh my goodness, Karen. Oh my goodness. We, we have a, it's a, also a day of photos from my couch. So she's got her little whirly gig quilt there. When I move the, the phone close to the, the computer camera, it does a little bit of a jiggle wiggle. So I'll try to hold it still. But you, can you see that? Those whirly gig blocks, extra fun. Love that. So she's getting binding on. That's a, her first finish, the first week of 2018. Lynn has a jelly roll lap quilt to work on. She's just from south of Winnipeg, Canada. I am doing my first jelly roll quilt and I'm loving seeing where the strips end up. This will be for my sister-in-law's 70th birthday at the end of the month. So she's busy there. She's got us on her tablet over there, and then she's got her quilt going on in her machine. So that's really exciting. So all my love to Winnipeg. I bet things are cold near Winnipeg today. I think it was April when I flew to Winnipeg. <laughs> and it was still snowy and icy and cold and freezing. Jane says, quilt cam question. I just want to know how you got that quilt in the background hanging so nicely at an angle. Did you have to insert dowels under two corners? Um, no, it's actually push pins. I've pinned it to the wall that way. And it's it's been there. That one's been there for the last, what have we been here now, 10 years? <laughs> I don't think that one's ever come off the wall. I just thought that was a fun way to hang it instead of having all of the quilt square. It's just push pins, Jane. That's my kind of decorating. If you can put a pin in it, I will. All right. We've also got some exciting things that, that Jane has. Um, every year she takes care of our On Ringo Lake graphics. So when we've had the reveal, she does the little buttons for your blogs or things that you can um, add to your label and print it off on, on the computer if you wanted to print a uh, label from the On Ringo Lake logo. And then she, um, we have a little... Zazzle store that she runs and we we do um, logo designs on t-shirts and aprons and mugs and who knows bumper stickers and, and whatever and we've got the price point set as low as it can go any of the proceeds from our Zazzle store go for um, quilts for kids and yarn for hats and mittens and scarves and things like that to help um, those in need. So we'll be posting that information tomorrow as well. You might just find a coffee mug or a t-shirt on Zazzle that you have to have and know that your purchase is um, helping those in needs. We've used that, that um, proceeds to buy backings, to buy battings, to buy 
yarn um, for, for little ICU hats and things like that, NCU and ICU. I'm tripping over my tongue today. So all of, all of those, those things um, help and you get something really fun in the process with a memory of your On Ringo Lake uh, project. So we'll have that tomorrow on the blog for you. Thanks again, Jane. All righty, down to the bottom, we are just, we are, the, the emails are, there's like 100 emails coming in here. Vanessa, she says, from Wyoming, thanks for finding time for Quilt Cam today. I'm working on some blocks for a swap with friends on Instagram and ironing the rest of the Christmas, um, Oh, ignoring that ironing, <laughs> ignoring the rest of the Christmas re recadations. I think she meant decorations that still need to be put away and dryer buzzer. But now I want to grab some works in progress and get out my treadle. My Minnesota Model A works great till I get to about halfway through the bob and then I start to get snarls. I think that's what happened here too. It's very tightly wound on those little spindles. I'll keep working with it though. Keep on treadling. And that's from Vanessa in Wyoming. This one is from Bernadette, who says, hello from Mayo, Ireland. So Ireland's tuning in tonight. She says, working on my, my En Provence mystery quilt tonight. And she's got a picture here. She sent photos of her blocks and of this progress. Oh, that looks great. She's got about half of it put together here on her floor. My short leash here. So there's her En Provence quilt all the way from Ireland. So I'm really, really excited about, about Ireland because I'll be going back in June of 2020. I have to wait two and a half years, but I'll be going back uh, my second time to Ireland. So we're looking forward to that. If you're interested in going to Ireland with me, you'll want to check out um, crafttours.com. As soon as they have those pages updated on their website, I'll link to them on the blog, but I think it's far enough in advance that they don't have those pages up there yet. But let me tell you, 2020 is going to be an exciting year because we're doing uh, Poland and Ireland and Guatemala in 2020. And then December of, of 2019, we're going to go back to Germany and do the Bavaria and the Christmas markets again. I love that one so much when they asked me if I'd want to go again. That is one place that I will always go back to. It's just absolutely um, so fun. Let's see what we've got here. Cheryl Brown. Apparently, I need supervision. <laughs> oh, that's so classic. Hang on, just see. So she's being supervised, and there's her quilt cam there in the background as well, and she's sewing on her lovely little featherweight today. So happy to, to have you walking, working with us, Cheryl. Okay, so Bonnie's got a treadle here. My little stack of scraps that I put here on the desktop is kind of getting to be pretty much the same thing. So I'm about ready to have to pull another handful out of there. And this one... No, that won't work. I need one more strip here. Maybe this one. This one, that'll work. Won't cover everything, but it'll work. When I'm choosing fabrics, I'm just going for variety. So if I have something that's a little small flower print, I'm not going to put another little small flower print next to it. I want something that looks a little bit different, maybe something that's geometric or a stripe or a plaid or a batik or a tone on tone, something to break up um, what's already going on in that block. This is the corner. Remember this little short, short little point right here? I want a piece big enough that's going to cover this corner plus more so I can slide that ruler up and miss that place where I fell short down there. So I'm thinking that, will this piece do it? Nope, that's already in that block. Another thing that I do is if I've already used that fabric in that block, I'll choose something else. I think I'm going to grab these little Chinese guys. And will that be big enough? Yeah, I'm going to, I cut a square. And then I just fold the square on the diagonal and I can cut myself two triangles and I get more usable fabric that way than if I had just put a rectangle on my block. So let's see if we can get this guy on here. And he's going to be plenty big. I 
tend to sew with a little bit less than a quarter inch when I'm string piecing because the seams are so heavy. There's almost as much fabric on the inside of the quilt in the seam allowances than um, in the front of the quilt. Okay. And this is how you know that your stitch may be too small. I'm going to make that just a little bigger. On these treadles, there's no stitch length indicator, so you just it's just trial and error. Still too small. I need some new stuff. Okay, we'll do this one. And there's little Chinese guys right there. And it extended far enough beyond the paper that I won't have to worry about that anymore. So how are we doing on time here, girl, guys? We've got about another 10 minutes. Let's start one more block. My to-do list is as long as my arm today. I have to finish packing. Laundry is running as we do this. I have to write up invoices. I have to write tomorrow's blog post and my son wants to go to dinner and since he is getting up we're leaving the house at 4 a.m. to get me to the airport by 4:30 because I have to uh, board the flight at 5 we'll take him to dinner my alarm is set to go off at 3 and I'm okay with that until I realize that that's just midnight California time. So by the time I get there by by noon, I will have been going for 12 hours already. So <laughs> there will be a nap. There will be. Okay, now we can stick in these scissors. think you want to treadle it's a lot of fun it's good exercise when it's seven degrees outside your feet can still be warm there's just something timeless about it I just I just love it I'd say that you know because I can sew at a slower pace but you see how I sew I don't sew at a slower pace for anybody okay too tiny can this fit no oh, it just just fit One more piece on this one, and I think it's going to be done. Oh, that's really ugly. <laughs> Chinese guys. We'll use up the second half of that Chinese guy. This is just too much fun. Okay. So we got... This corner here, I think I need to add one more piece. This is just too big, but it's still too close. So the next piece, I'm going to scooch about halfway down that strip, making this strip fairly narrow, and I'll trim it afterwards. My wrist is buzzing every time an email comes in, so it's like getting shock therapy here. I love that picture, Cheryl. That's too cute. I'm saving that one. Claudette says, watching quilt cam. Happy New Year, watching you from Anaheim, California, working on a breast cancer quilt for a friend's mom. So thank you for doing that, Claudette. I understand it's raining in Southern California. And I said, I'll, I'll take the rain as long as it's, you know, above 50 degrees. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the rain. This one's from a phone number. And there's no name on it. So if you are texting me, from your phone, you're sending an email from your text app, you need to put your name so I know who you are. Okay, so if you are area code 724, you know who you are. 
Um, I made this clock out of men's ties for my friend when her father passed away. So she's got, oh, that is very cool. And there is a clock. There is a clock. So it, it's a, a quilted clock. And she's actually got the clock mechanism in the center there and made from her friend's father's ties. So there's another idea for you. I love that. That is just really sweet. You know, that's such a special gift. And ties are such a, a personal thing when it comes to, you know, menswear. That's really neat. Bridget says, cathedral window. I wanted to share the two amazing cathedral window quilts made by my grandmother back in the 70s. My parents gifted them to me at Thanksgiving, and they are such a treasure. I remember my grandmother making both of these out of muslin and the scraps from all of her clothes that she made, every bit double knit polyester. So she's got polyester double knit in the windows and then miles and miles and miles of muslin. Have you ever looked at how much fabric goes in a cathedral window quilt? There's no batting. It's, it's like layers and layers and layers of muslin, but they are just gorgeous. So she's sent, let's see if I can get this to fit the screen here. Beautiful. So the top photo is sideways. It's on the bed. But you can see on the bottom, the cathedral window blocks. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save these photos because these quilts are so interesting. I'm going to save this post and I'll post it on Tuesday's post. I'm going to, on the blog, I'll, I'll embed this quilt cam and share some of the shares that were um, shared with us while we were here together on Facebook. So I'm going to save that, Bridget. That it is, it is precious. I was at the Antique Mall just yesterday um, in Wilkesboro. I was able to stop on the way home because I didn't have Sadie with me. So I didn't have to worry about a dog in the car. And some of the quilts that I saw were made with um, like poly cotton broadcloth, you know, shiny and slick. And, but, but so much work went into those. And they were just beautiful. And some of the, the quilts were made from the 60s or, or 70s. And we look at that fabric now and we go, ooh. But I look at the, the workmanship that went into them. And, and they were just magnificent. So I'm really glad that you got these two quilts. They're very, very special. And we may laugh and laugh and laugh at, at, at double knit, you know. But they did the best that they could with what they had. And that stuff will never fade. <laughs> never fade. So those are, those are really, really precious. Thank you for um, sharing. All the way to the top of the news feed here, of my email feed here, candy. We've got two candies back to back. We'll do both candies. This one's Candy Mitten, and she says, working on my turn for a round robin quilt, my leaders and enders are on Ringo Lake. I doubled the mystery for my twin beds in my camper. I can't wait until they are finished. Thanks for all you do. And this is Candy from Wilkesboro. So next time I go antiquing to Wilkesboro, Candy, we should meet for lunch or something. Oh, those are going to be so cute. I love your colors. Oh, my gosh. So here's what she's working on there. You can see all those fun colors. I think color is one of those things that gets me through the winter blahs. I don't know about you, but if I'm dealing with a lot of color and things that make my eyes happy, what's going on outside doesn't matter as much. Those are super cute. Love that. And then um, the other candy, they were right next to each other, right there in my email. It said candy and then candy. Candy O'Brien says, working on Clue 4 and watching Quilt Cam. And she's got... Let's see if I can get this up here. Come on, open up. Oh, we're on the big screen. <laughs> so, whoops, it turned. Shoot, okay. So, if I if I turn the phone, the whole the whole thing's going to turn. See? Oh, darn it. So, what if I do this? Can I go view image? There we go. Okay, so there's her workspace there. She's got us up on the big screen. She's watching all of the hearts and stuff going thumbs up, go flying by. So we're so happy to have you join us, Candy. And for the, especially for those who joined us from outside the USA, one of the emails that came through said, it's 6 a.m. in Australia and I'm watching Quill Camp. So uh, I think that 3 a.m., maybe, maybe see if, we would, if we did 4, 4, 4 p.m., it's going to be... 10 p.m. in Europe. So those folks will already have gone to bed. So 3 p.m. is 9 p.m. in Europe. So that maybe some of those folks will still be up. But Australia is just waking up. So like th this is what I'm thinking here. 3 p.m. is a good time to catch people from pretty much globally um, around here. So next quilt cam. 
probably when I get back from this trip, um, I come back on, is it the 13th, next Saturday? And then I'm, I'm home for a little over a week. My birthday falls in that time. And I actually get my birthday present, which is my replacement tooth that's going on the implant. Hooray. I wanted that before I started my teaching year, but we'll be toothless until um, till the 22nd. So we'll have some time there. And then my next trip after that, I'm teaching for three different guilds in Florida. Good plan for the end of January. My February is mostly driving trips. So um, we, we did that because you never know what air is, what's going to happen with air travel. And even Atlanta can be closed down in February because of ice storms and whatever. So I'm just driving fairly locally up through Virginia and South Carolina um, in February. March, I'm headed back to California to teach for the empty spools um, at Asilomar. I'm looking forward to that. So that'll take us through the next few months. Um, we'll do quilt cam whenever we can fit it in. And in between that, if you continue to follow on Facebook and on Instagram, um, I share daily what's going on. Little glimpse of that, little glimpse of this, and things that are going on during my day. And of course, the blog um, every day. Um, the, me and, and the postmaster, <laughs> through through ice and snow and wind and rain or whatever, we shall not fail. The blog gets posted one, one way or the other. Um, new laptop. We'll see how that goes. It's time for me to sign off here and go actually get some stuff done for this trip coming up. Uh, I heard the buzzer on the dryer. Remember, who was it earlier that said, I'm ignoring the buzzer on the dryer. I heard it. Um, got some stuff to do, but I'm looking forward to sharing with you on your on Ringo Lake progress tomorrow on the blog, Mystery Monday link up, and in between everything else, if you can get a little bit of sewing time, a little bit of fabric petting time, a little bit of organization time, take it. All right. So if you're still early wherever you are and you have time to keep sewing, keep going. If you are off running to do something else, I wish you a happy Sunday for the rest of your day, and we'll catch you next time on Quilt Cam. Bye, everybody. Have a good afternoon.